World's Fair at Seattle in the state of Washington. The only World Fair ever to make a profit. And not one British sailor was the least surprised at that, since they charged 14 bob to get in. Americans wandered around ooing and aahing, but the crew of the Belfast had a funny feeling that we'd seen it all before. The details were vague after 18 months of globetrotting, but there was hardly a country exhibiting at Seattle that we hadn't visited since we flew out from Britain in the March of 61 to HMS Belfast at Singapore. Largest and one of the oldest of the Navy's cruisers, HMS Belfast was now a flagship on the Far East Station. Doubtless some of us thought we'd get a cushy number and visualized shore runs to Pacific Islands, sipping coconut wine as we watched the dusky maidens preparing our food. But every time the old man choppered on board, we knew that all we'd get over the next week or two would be backache and blisters. For the Navy rarely stops training, and day or night you practice firefighting or collision drill, or you rescue non-existent men who've fallen overboard. And as you train, you sometimes remember your predecessors who took the Belfast into battle in 1943 at North Cape. She was the first ship to get the enemy on her radar, and the first ship to fire in the action that destroyed the Scharnhorst. The action that may have been the last classic battle between heavy surface ships that the world will ever see. Operation Tucker Box took us to Australia, and the largest single-span coat hanger in the world. But if we thought the Sydney Harbour Bridge was enormous, it paled into insignificance when compared with the generosity of Sydney's welcome. The houses may have been covered more with mortgages than paint, but it didn't show. And the idyllic life of swimming and parties was so distracting that the zoo, normally one of those places that lonely men go, barely saw one of the Belfast's crew. Amphibian gives way to fully submersible in the Pacific, as we rendezvous with the tactician and pass mail to her, to help her pass the boredom of a six-week exercise. Soon, everyone off watch crowded the rails and ogled at communist junks and sampans and women in black poplin trousers as we arrived in Hong Kong, one of the most fascinating ports in the world. Several of the China Station's minesweepers formed an escort for Princess Alexandra as she came out in the Admiral's barge to the Belfast. But most of us were even more anxious to see one of Hong Kong's most fabulous characters, Sampan Jenny. Jenny's been around for years now, supplying side parties to paint Navy vessels in exchange for the ship's waste. Nobody knows what she does with it, but she's mysteriously rumored to own half the waterfront. November the 11th, and the Belfast in Hong Kong joins with millions throughout the world in remembering. Thousands stand in the cold rains of Whitehall, but here it was 70 in the shade as Princess Alexandra pays homage to the millions who did not live to see the peace. After a few days in Hong Kong, we got quite expert at bargaining and thought we got everything at rock bottom price. Until some old hands told us we'd paid far more than we should have done and were ruining it for everyone else. But don't let them kid you that the Navy is all sunbathing and sightseeing. It's often, such as when you replenish at sea, ruddy hard work. But the time and motion study boys are at work all the while and mechanical aids are taking a lot of the sweat out of refueling and revittling. You might be, and often are, at sea for weeks on end. But the ship's newspaper, the radio and regular mail drops make you feel that you haven't been completely forgotten. Some of us even like the life. 
and the number of Chinese cooks and stewards who were awarded long service and good conduct medals proved that it's a career worth taking up. Across the Indian Ocean to Dar es Salaam at the start of the rainy season, the Governor-General came aboard, a man who was soon to be out of a job. The Tanganyika was to become independent on the 8th of December. The local football stadium was the setting for the independence ceremony, and we watched the King's African Rifles marching for the last time. Within an hour, they would become the Tanganyika Rifles, as another independent country emerged from Africa. We left Africa in the evening. The Governor General came down to the jetty to see us off, and the Belfast's 80,000 horsepower dug her screws in for the 5,000 mile voyage to Singapore and on to Japan. We, like everyone else, fell in love with Japan, the land of cherry blossom and kimonos of flower arrangements and gaily coloured birds. Japan, we remember mainly, for the orphans party we threw on board when the ship became a fun fair. And the kids had the time of their lives, with the exception of one little charmer who sulked all day because we wouldn't plonk a six inch shell in the middle of his schoolhouse. different sort of party in San Francisco when we had an open day and many Americans learned to their astonishment that Britain had a navy. Sure leave too in Frisco and a chance for us to examine the Americans as amateur sociologists and ornithologists and the Marines were warned to be careful with their matches as a couple of hundred years ago they burned down the White House. As a sailor you get a unique opportunity to study bridges. And after a while, you become quite expert at spotting rust patches and trying to recognize where you are from the style of construction. Vancouver's bridge fooled most of us, since few had previously visited Canada. Being at sea for long periods makes you pine for two things and one of them is the smell and sight of trees. We hired cars and drove up to the Rockies and made a trip that really sticks in our memories. When we were at sea again, transferring, refueling and always exercising, the two ships never travelled together in the Navy without improving their tactics and training for the battle which may never come. We tried out pre-wetting nozzles, which would wash away nuclear contamination if we passed through an atomic cloud. The training paid off one afternoon when a mayday flashed from a sea vixen some 30 miles from the Belfast. Radar fixed the position of his prang and the ship raced to the rescue at 32 knots. Navy choppers were there before us and grabbed the pilot. But our boat's crew rescued the observer and collected what debris was still floating so that the technicians might be able to decide what went wrong. And we'd had a practical demonstration that our 18 months of training really paid off in an emergency. months, we'd covered tens of thousands of miles and seen 17 countries. Yet when we look back, it's the funny and pleasant moments we remember in a kaleidoscope of coloured memories. The afternoon exercise periods in the Pacific, diving into the shark-proofed private swimming pool of the Belfast, the regatta at Trincomalee when we took on the rest of the Navy 
and went down fighting. And that glorious afternoon, when the electrical division was invited to lower the whaler and sank the darn thing, they went away mumbling that they'd invite us to rewire a transformer one day and see what sort of job we'd make of that. Now, as we approached the Panama Canal, we passed under the first bridge to link North and South America, part of the Pan American Highway, which one day will link the 10,000 miles between Alaska and Chile. It felt strange to be in an inland waterway after 18 months at sea. Stranger still to think it cost a dollar a ton, say 4,000 pounds, in pilot fees to get the Belfast through the Panama Canal. The blue of the Pacific gave way to the grey of the North Atlantic as we cracked on for the last few days to Plymouth. Our Cook's tour was over. The commission ended. If we'd been civilian vacationers, the trip would have cost three or four thousand pounds. But as we came into Plymouth, every single one of us would have said that this was the best moment of the life. We'd seen the world from the spruce and fir of Canada to the eucalyptus trees of Australia and Japan's apple blossom. Next time we leave British shores, it might be in a destroyer, an aircraft carrier or a frigate. Our destination might be any one of the five foreign stations. And you could come and see the world with us, if you want to. <laughs>